All right. Hello. Um, good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Sohil Sood. I am one of the directors of the Global Child Health Lecture Series uh, at UCSF. And it is my absolute pleasure today to welcome uh, a very large and in charge group of amazing adolescents and their mentors and teachers here today. Um, you're in you're in for a treat. Uh, we have we have but, you know, what I would describe as good people doing good work in a good way. Um, we got 1.2 adolescents in this world, and many don't have access to the health and education supports they really need to thrive in this world. Um, and there's high time we do something about it. So uh, Priya and Ricky are uh, two amazing individuals, Dr. Priya Shankar and, and Ricky Sharma. Um, who, uh, along with a, with a huge group of very important people, have put together uh, what's called Adolescent Health Champions. Uh, this is the point where I normally introduce Dr. Shankar and, and Ricky, but uh, I know them well and know, trust them to introduce themselves and their very, very large team to, to all of you. Um, so I just want to turn the mic over to them and, and have them run the show. Thank, Thank you, you so much for being here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, um, Sohil. Um, so first off, I wanted to say a welcome to everyone who's here and a big thank you to our youth, our students who are here today to present, our principals who have joined in, some of our teachers as well who are here to support the young people, um, and our youth advisory board members who are also present um, to support their other um, champions and fellow um, peer educators. I'm really, really excited to be here. Um, I am a graduate of UCSF um, from the pediatric residency program two years ago. And um, UCSF has been such an amazing part of my own career and journey. And um, you know, I wouldn't be here without the support I received during those many um, formative years as a resident at UCSF. So two years ago, I left um, UCSF and I joined a Fogarty NIH fellowship in global adolescent health. And I'm currently based in New Delhi, India as a pediatrician. And I'm affiliated with Kalavati Saran Children's Hospital at their WHO affiliated center for adolescent health. And um, since I was a medical student and then a resident and now as a pediatrician and fellow, I have been so, so um, lucky to be able to work on adolescent health champions with this amazing team who's here. And what we do is we really try to train adolescents as peer health educators and leaders focusing on gender and adolescent health um, in India. So today what you're gonna hear is actually, um, you're gonna hear mainly from the youth um, who are the presenters for today. And they'll be talking a lot about the program, um, how we've changed during the course of the pandemic, what we've learned during the course of the pandemic and how we've been navigating um, the second wave and the first wave and po possibly a third wave of the pandemic over the last year and a half. One year ago when our team presented actually at, Globe, at this Global Health presentation, we had a lot of questions that we were asking and there was so much flux and so many questions that we had to kind of navigate during that time. And I'm really excited for our young people to share some of the progress that we've made, as well as some of the questions that we still are asking ourselves. And so um, the last thing I just wanted to say is a huge, huge thank you to um, our youth today. It's 8.30 at night in um, India. And um, a lot of the youth here have um, you know, been really excited to come and present and their parents and guardians um, have provided them permission to come and speak. Um, I'd also like to say the biggest thank you to um, Sohil, who um, on my own personal journey as a pediatrician has been so, so influential, um, starting as a medical student, then a resident, and now as a member of our board of directors of AHC, helping us think about um, our strategy, our expansion, how to involve youth, how to fundraise, so many big um, questions that we ask every day and has most importantly been the biggest, biggest supporter of adolescent health champions. Um, and so now I'm gonna actually pass it over to Ricky Sharma, who is our co-founder and who will discuss a little bit more about AHC as well. Hi everyone, good morning and, and good evening uh, to all who have joined. Um, so my name is Ricky. I'm Priya's actual, uh, we're partners in, in life. Um, we're, we're married as well as we're the co-founders of AHC. Um, I wanted to echo everything Priya said. For those of you who are here from the Global Health Pathway, um, consider yourselves very, very lucky to be able to work with Sohil. He's been 
just an amazing mentor, such a source of positivity, practicality, and, you know, compassion. And he has just given us so much, you know, love and support over the past few years on our journey. So we're always so grateful to him for everything he's done for us and, and for giving us this wonderful opportunity and platform to share our work. Um, second of all, a huge, huge welcome to our, our principals. We have Lakshmi Ma'am here from one of our partner schools. We have one of our teachers, Enid Ma'am, um, from another one of our schools. And we, we might be missing others because there's so many Priya Shankars in this meet, so I'm not sure who all is here. But also a big, big welcome to our youth advisory board members uh, who you'll be hearing from today. And just so many of our students and champions from our various schools who we sent out the, the invite in the past couple of days and I'm just blown away by the enthusiasm and excitement for many of you who have joined. Some of them have been with us for you know one or two years. Some of them have only recently undergone our, our virtual programming and have carried their excitement into today's session. So a very, very warm welcome to all and, and looking forward to hearing from some amazing and, and remarkable youth. So back to you, Priya. Yes, so now I will pass it on to um, Ishani Ma'am. Um, would love for you to introduce yourself as well to the team. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Yes, I am Ishani Vakharia, and I'm the uh, Director of Education and School Partnerships with Adolescent Health Champions. And I have been an educator and a teacher for most of my life. And as a teacher, I had always seen that the students, uh, the, 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 the academic curriculum does not go in depth, uh, uh, you know, talk about in depth uh, study about the adolescent health, the adolescent behavior. And I had always felt the need to talk to the uh, students about uh, the changes and the, uh, the, the social behaviors and the uh, physical changes that they go through. And when I uh, saw the AHC curriculum, I was really, really impressed. And that's how I really feel that I'm honored actually to be part of AHC and to carry this forward. And today, uh, as, as uh, Dr. Priya said, it's a youth-centric program. And today, again, the presentation is going to be by the youth. So it is really a, a, a proud moment to see how the youth have vocalized and they have been able to uh, talk about these topics, which are considered to be stigmatic and taboo topics. And yet they have become so open and frank and able to discuss them. So uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm very happy to be here. It is my pleasure and honor to be here. Thank you so much. And I shall pass it on to our uh, uh, Joy Sir, uh, Joy Bhattacharya. Uh, thank you, Shani ma'am. I think you really covered up and summed up my motivation behind joining AHC because as an adolescent myself, when I was studying and I was, you know, kind of uh, denied and I was not taught about all these topics in school. So that is something that really aligned me to join and work with the AHC so that I can also contribute to this global uh, intervention of supporting and helping our youths in India. Uh, talking about myself, uh, I, my name is Joy. Uh, I'm currently a second year master's student in public policy. And with the HC, I've been working with the expansion with virtual programming and also with the research team. And now I would like to pass it to pass it on to our youth Kasturi to introduce herself. Hello everyone, my name is Kasturi Survey. I'm a ninth grader and my pronouns are she, her, hers. And now I'd like to call upon Avni to introduce herself. Yes, uh, thank you Kasturi. So I am Avni Doshi from, I'm currently studying in ninth grade and my pronoun are she, her and hers. I would like to pass it on to Pavan. Yeah, thank you Avni. Hi everyone, I'm Pavan Rajput from ninth grade. And I am is an adolescent health champion and uh, a youth adversary board member. Excellent. So um, importantly, you know, this is a youth led movement to transform adolescent health in India. And um, I will now pass it to Avni um, to speak more about all of this. Go ahead, Avni. Yes, uh, thank you, Priya, ma'am. So, so now today we are going to talk about the gender inequality in India. So India's 120 million adolescent girls face 50% plus chance of being unnutrished or anemic. One in four chance of dropping out of school once begin with their menstrual period. 
forty percent chance of physical and sexual abuse, one in five of teen pregnancy. So, adolescent health champions are conducting programs with all genders, and which includes the topics related to genders. And these are some of the brainstorming programs with it, which transforms a youth into a peer educator. And the peer educator works on their dialogue, support, knowledge, and prevention strategies. Yeah. So our approach, the Adolescent Health Champion, is a non-profit organization which is training adolescents globally as peer health educators. It has some innovative, evidence-based, sustainable peer-to-peer -peer edu education model, uh, which are which has a low-cost solution. With uh, school admin, teachers, and research board have also approved them. Now we'll talk about the youth as health educators. So when this uh, uh, virtual programming and this all came to our school, I didn't know that I have to deal with some critical health information. So I was uh, I was confident. I was uh, nervous. I never because I never uh, taught or I was never into these topics. So I was like, uh, I was very, very happy because there was something new coming up. So we, the champions teach some critical health topics uh, in their schools and communities, which have sustainable knowledge, which builds leadership and many other skills in ourselves with lifelong health benefits and a brighter, more gender equitable future. So now we'll talk about why the AHC curriculum is so important. So basically it is a youth centric and gender focused curriculum which was developed in collaboration with youth and leading healthcare and education experts globally, covering some critical topics such as nutrition and anemia, mental health and substance abuse, gender relationship, puberty and reproduction and COVID-19. creating the social value of our stakeholders. So we are very proud to tell that AHC has educated 8,500 plus youth, including 2,500 plus peer educators in standard 7 to 10th across India. So the short term impact is that it helps in increasing our health knowledge and awareness. The medium term impact is that it helps shifting health attitudes and cultivating community leaders. And its long-term impact is that it helps in improving health behaviors and practices. So children, children uh, grow and learn and they, they, the qualities which children have is uh, leadership, teaching, health communication and mentoring. The parents and guardians also have some benefits such as they get tools for children to have a healthy upbring, uh, upbring, upbringing. And for schools, uh, the students, they, uh, this, there are more healthier students. The students have very, uh, are very less absent. They are, more, they, are, they are more present in the schools and they are more productive. And the healthcare infrastructure benefits by understanding the gaps in adolescent friendly care. So now we will talk about adolescent health champions during COVID-19. So like when COVID-19 uh, arrived, the entire nation was into a long nationwide lockdown. And with this, even the our organization went through a lot of challenges and all. So in March 2020, in April 2020, 
One, India began experiencing a devastating second wave, setting global records for cases and deaths. Schools largely remain shut down for in-person teaching to these days. So while uh, our organization had some conversation with children, teachers, and school principals, which revealed us that they go, they go through a lot of worry, anxiety, fear, loneliness, they have lack of reliable information about COVID-19, the COVID-19 cases and deaths among the family and friends. There were more calls to children helplines. There were there were a lot of difficulty in shifting to e-learning. There were there was even a loss of livelihood plus migration to rural areas. So thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. Now I would like to pass it on to Kasturi. Thank you, Avni. Hello, everyone. So AHC's response to the COVID-19 pandemic has been laid out on this slide. The short-term impact was dealing with immediate changes, COVID-19 support for schools, youth, and their families. The medium-term impact was virtual programming involving Youth Advisory Board and AHC design programming strategy and AHC SAP development. The long-term impact was looking ahead to the years 2021 to 2022. Launching the Youth Advisory Board, YAB. Purpose, facilitating greater ownership of the organization by youth themselves. Membership, 20 student representatives across multiple schools. Six now a part of the AHC team permanently. Progress, bi-weekly meetings throughout the entire pandemic. Dialogue, conversation and agenda setting regarding health, gender, curriculum, organization strategy. So why is the Youth Advisory Board important? As we know, AHC stands for Adolescent Health Champions. So rather than being a youth-centered organization, it is, to be a, it is better to be an organization which involves youth. Since it is meant to help youth, it is, like, it is supposed to help us develop. It's better to know the youth's perspective. It's better to know, like, it's better to know what the youth are going through. So that is exactly what the YAB does. We are the pillar for AHC. We tell them the youth's perspective. We help them understand what the youth are going through. Thank you. I would now like to invite Pawan to take over. Hi, everyone. I am Pawan Rajput. And now let's talk about virtual programming during COVID-19. Transition entire module to virtual format during this pandemic. We have conducted more than virtual sessions and uh, educated them. Is anybody else having difficulty hearing Pavan? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma okay. um, Pavan, maybe try turning off your video. Maybe that'll help. I think maybe uh, Kasturi, if you can yes, take I'll take here. over. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. virtual programming during COVID-19. So we have still work Hello. during... I think he's back. Yes, so you are audible now. Uh, yes, shall I continue? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah okay. So now let's talk about virtual programming during COVID-19. Transition entire module to virtual format during this pandemic. Uh, we have conducted more than 100 virtual sessions and uh, educated more than 3,500 adolescents so far during this pandemic and uh, maintained successful school-based models uh, seeking input from and collaborating closely with our school partners. Support for parents and guardians. So, uh, given pen, given to this pandemic and youth often being at home with their uh, parents and guardians, we have created an uh, entire parents uh, curriculum in order to engage parents about health and well-being. 
uh, themes covered in uh, this model are mental health, independence, communication uh, with you to do fear tactics versus love and compassion and uh, importance of uh, positive communication. COVID-19 content. Context specific COVID-19 models in our curriculum. This is weighted by medical professionals, India and US. So the themes covered in a COVID-19 module are signs and symptoms of COVID-19, risk factors and the dangers of COVID-19, how to protect yourself and others, and uh, uh, take uh, how we can take care of our mental health. AHC mobile app. So currently we have designed uh, a AHC mobile app. So the purpose to design this app is to be engaged with uh, our uh, youth during this pandemic and including providing them with means to access mental and physical health support and resources. So this app is co-designed with YAB's involvement and uh, support and at every step. And, uh, this app contains our uh, curriculum, educational videos, activities, quizzes, support uh, resources, and much more. Uh, progress uh, 1.0 fully developed, launching cloud in end of September 2021 in four schools. Our major milestone during this pandemic. So currently, 33 more members are added in our team, expanded board of directors, built our research footprint, published a study evaluating our model in a annals of global health peer-reviewed academic journals, launched six research studies to continue evaluating our impact plus COVID-19 response, adolescence-friendly healthcare infrastructure. So these are some of the pictures of our Instagram handle and marketing strategies. We have been trying a social media presence through Instagram and uh, many of the youth have shown their opinion through social media. So now I would like to invite Kasturi to take over the session. Yes, thank you, Pavan. So this video is about how our curriculum has been switched to a virtual curriculum since we cannot actually visit the school premises right now. And another purpose of making this video is because it is important to connect through visual content too. And I'd like to mention that the YAP had encouraged AHC to make this video. We have worked very hard on involving the youth virtually just as much as we would have worked and involving them offline. So basically we conduct a study. So before we go to a school, like for conducting a program, we conduct a pretest to understand how much knowledge the students already have about the certain topics. And then after the session, there is a post test to understand how much the students have gained through the session. And uh, we have gotten the results for that. According to the study we conducted, the students who attended our program were very involved in health topics. The study also suggests that the attitude towards health topics and the knowledge had significantly improved after the sessions. The Lancet article. Recently, a YAB member, Neha, had her article published in The Lancet this year. The article speaks about the AHC program being a YAB member, along with a few other topics. AHC also has its very own newsletter. And I'm very proud to say that I also write articles for the newsletter. The YAB members are co-authors of research articles. The research team recently conducted a national study based on the impact of COVID-19 on the youth. This study received well over a thousand responses. The YAB members involved had designed this questionnaire and were a huge part in the making of this research. Thank you, I now invite Joyce. Thank you so much, Kasturi.
So yeah, like over the years, we have received a lot of uh, qualitative feedback from our champions, uh, from parents and from our teachers. And we have tried incorporating all that feedback into our curriculum and have also tried to make our mode of learning more effective. We in fact have, as, as you have seen, the presenters who have themselves been uh, adolescent head champions, who have themselves have gone through the entire process of understanding of learning the curriculum and have been peer educators themselves. So if I may request uh, Avni, Kasturi, Pawan, if you guys may share your experiences of your journey of whole of learning, understanding and your journey of being the peer educators. I'll go first. My experience as a peer educator has been absolutely beautiful. I have noticed that I have become more open-minded and my personality has transformed ever since I have been involved with AFC because certain topics like LGBTQ, relationships, gender, reproductive health, they're all considered very stigmatic in India. And as much as I know, an adolescent in India would fumble while saying these words. So as I'm saying this, like without any hesitation right now, that's how much I transformed. I can say all these things. I know about them. And I'm very proud that I can educate the others around me very accurately about such things. And uh, AHC, even though I haven't met any of the team members offline, I have only been involved virtually. It still feels like a very beautiful, safe, and positive atmosphere for me. So I'd like to invite Avni to share her experience. Yeah, I would uh, totally agree with the what uh, Kasturi said, as we were the normal youth, we were the normal students in our schools and uh, AHC brought the program in our schools and we got the chance to lead the programs, the lead the sessions, we got the chance to become a peer educator. First, we were like, we were absolutely scared, like how we will do this? How are we going to teach the youth? We had no idea what to do. But then uh, the a entire AHC team was so, so optimistic towards all the topics and all. So they were like, oh, no problem. We will handle it. We will do it. We are there for you. They were so, so cooperative. And I think that made us push uh, every time and we had the fears like what people will think how our friends are going to react to this we all had that fears but we had to we overcome uh, we had to overcome it as we became the, the peer educator so uh, this peer being a peer educator was was a very was a was a very beautiful time because to teach the youth is i think is the to educate someone is the most valuable thing in life. So I think it was the most valuable uh, time I was in too. So now I think Pavan should go. Uh, right, Pavan, if you're here, if you would want to share uh, a few words about your experiences of being a peer educator. Right. I think he was having some connectivity issues as well. But I mean, thank you so much, Kasturi and Avni, for sharing that. I think these are really great points. And these, you know, it also really gives us the motivation to be continuing to be doing what we are doing when you when we hear that how positively we have been able to change the outcomes. Uh, and yeah, it's really good to hear from you guys. Uh, we also have an educator amongst our team, that is Ashani Ma'am, who has been very actively involved with the whole AHC team and has been supporting our adolescents. Uh, if we can have Ishani Ma'am to talk about her experiences of working with the kids. Yes, thank you, Joy, sir. Uh, it is definitely very heartwarming to see peer educators and the champions speak up with so much passion uh, that they share with the AHC values. And uh, yes, it has been a very beautiful journey uh, from physically visiting these schools and interacting with students in their familiar school surrounding uh, to moving on to a virtual uh, platform. So the peer educator model has helped the, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a big hit. It has helped the youth to open up and talk about the topics as Kasuri mentioned, which are uh, still difficult to share and be transparent about. And uh, these topics are, as I said, they are not very much uh, taken, it's just at surface level, uh, level uh, considered in the school curriculum. 
so the first step transitioning from girls health uh, champions to uh, you know including boys becoming adults in health champions was a, a, a huge step because uh, you know we can see that the uh, boy champions are also so passionate about it it's it's a really good uh, fact that they need to talk about these things too and understand them and once the pandemic hit uh, the transition to a uh, virtual platform uh, let us uh, connect with schools uh, across india in fact you know uh, because of uh, the virtual program we could connect to schools uh, in delhi in uh, bangalore uh, you know and we are trying to still reach out to those schools across india uh, so it was a great uh, success to conduct this uh, uh, ahc curriculum in schools but also it has its own challenges that uh, many schools uh, students do not have uh, you know uh, access to uh, the device uh, or the uh, internet so there there may be students who are sharing the device with their siblings or parents so we are trying to uh, also uh, make uh, uh, something uh, you know maybe uh, video recording or something so that these students can also have access to this curriculum and we have also overcome the language barrier like uh, you know uh, trying to do uh, the curriculum in hindi and then trying to uh, reach out to students who are not english medium schools yeah uh, so yes it is a very very great uh, uh, you know curriculum for the students or the, for the adolescents and uh, as as all the youth here mentioned it Uh, the confidence that they share uh, in talking and in in uh, educating their friends and neighbors because of the authenticity and the uh, facts that are uh, you know really true instead of getting all the half hazard uh, information from uh, you know internet sites so uh, it has been a great journey and yes uh, we're looking forward to more and more thank you and uh, yes dr priya to you right uh Thank you so much, Shani, ma'am. Uh, right, and talking about uh, the path forward as to what we want to do during and even uh, beyond the pandemic. So yes, we want to continue with our COVID nineteen response, wherein we want to have more virtual sessions with schools. We are also uh, closely monitoring the situation in India. So there have been a lot of states that have started to physically reopen schools, and we are also looking at the possibilities of conducting physical classes, physical sessions with the school as well. But then, yeah, keeping in mind also the consideration of the possible third wave. So we are pretty flexible in terms of. a modal delivery wherein we will be continue with our virtual sessions and we would want to support more number of youth who have been dealing with mental health uh, issues during the pandemic and we would really want to help them with our resources uh, talking about major partnerships so we are already in the process of initiating a lot of conversations with local level ngos that have been working in the field of health and education more importantly we also have a lot of state governments local level governments that are working in the field of adolescent health and we have already started having conversations with them so that we can have potential partnerships and we can support our governments in the initiative of helping our helping the adolescents in india uh, as already discussed so we are already in the process of rolling out our mobile application which we are going to pilot by the end of this month month in four schools um, we will be obviously reaching out to schools that we have already done the session with but most importantly we are also planning to reach out to additional number of schools wherein we have not done the sessions but wherein we can maybe uh, pilot a mobile app and we can reach out to more number of youth uh, talking about building uh, infrastructure to scale in india so we Uh, as this is something that was already discussed that we have started expanding our india based teams so this year so far we have already had like 33 more people that have been hired and we are hiring more people from india uh, we are also having a lot of research that is being done so that the, which can be integrated into clinical and healthcare uh, infrastructure now uh, i would request uh, priya ma'am to take it forward by just saying a huge thank you to all of the speakers all the youth who spoke so beautifully um i i wanted to just um kind of give a big picture and i think so he'll really nicely started the presentation by talking about how there's major gaps in adolescent health globally and this is so true it is one of the most like neglected spaces um globally when you think about um global health we focus a lot on under 5 mortality or we focus on maternal health and you know adolescent health is a space that's really really neglected all over the world and specifically when we think about india um india has um 240 million adolescents the largest 
largest adolescent population in the entire world. Um, it's 20% of the entire um, uh, adolescent population is living in India. So it's a huge and massive, massive, massive population. And I just wanted to mention that issues of gender equity and justice really begin during the adolescent year. So there's a lot of scope for really working within this group and really trying to support this group. And um, as AHC, some of the things that we think a lot about is you know, okay, we have this amazing population, this vibrant population, this young population with so much potential. And, and yet, um, you know, from a clinical perspective, like thinking about it from a, firstly a clinical perspective, um, if you think about fellowship training for the field of adolescent medicine, right? Um, every single program is based in Western nation. There are nations, there are about 14 programs or so. All of them are based in Western nations, but 90% of adolescents do not live in Western nations. So that is telling, right? That's a telling point about, you know, the huge gap in where we're thinking about adolescent health and why we really need to be thinking about adolescent health, especially in a place like India. Um, and secondly, you know, the reason that we think about um, involving youth voice is because, um, you know, as an AHC team, we believe so strongly in um, the promise and the potential of these young people. And, you know, some of these really recalcitrant ideas around gender, around sexuality, around um, reproductive rights, um, you know, it's really hard to change them, but we feel that um, young people, um, you know, are often in the best position to make changes, if not with their parents and the, and the older generation, at least with the future generation. And um, since there's 240 million of them, um, we really, really feel they have a lot of potential <laughs> in actually making these changes and um, really, really, uh, you know, changing the conversations for generations to come. And so that is the hope. And I hope that this um, presentation um, has given an insight about that and has given at least an opportunity for you to hear from some of these young voices who um, are, are changing the world, are talking about these things, are changing the conversation right now, every single day in their schools, have demonstrated so so much bravery to talk about these things. I think these are issues that um, clinicians, that teachers, um, you know, we all kind of falter, even in going through medical school, you know, the, I will say from my own experience, my first, you know, doing a sexual history, it was so nerve wracking, but these are young people who are talking about sexual health so early and talking about it in an unabashed and unafraid way. In a, a truly, truly confident manner. And I think um, that's what I really hope um, uh, everyone uh, takes away from this is just truly the, the potential and promise of young people when, you know, just given an opportunity and a chance. Um, so I know we have like 20 minutes or so for questions and I, I would just like love to open up for questions about any of the things that were discussed, um, any questions or reflections or thoughts, um, we'd be very, very grateful to hear from everybody present here. All right. Thank you so much, Priya and Ricky, Ishani Mom and Joy for uh, the, the presentation and more importantly, the work that you're doing. Uh, Pavan, Kasturi, Avni, you give me so much hope about the future of this world, uh, including for my two daughters. So thank you for presenting and, and everything that, you, that you're doing. Uh, as Priya said, the floor is open. Uh, feel free to ask questions. Um, and uh, did I see someone with their hand raised? Sorry, yeah, Rashi, uh, I see your hand raised. I'm not sure if you have a question. If so, you can feel free to unmute yourself and ask it. Yes, sir, I wanted to see that nowadays. I have also seen sometimes that some children are not aware of this thing uh, and like they don't get to know. what is happening and what is going on so that we all are aware and then we all can uh, take an action against wrong. Thank you, Rashi. That was beautifully to the presentation. Rashi is actually our, one of our newest youth advisory board members. So I'm really, really proud of you for, for joining the conversation and, and participating in today's session. And we're so, so board going forward. So thank you, Rashi, for sharing that. 
Yes, so, yes, it would be so, so great to hear great to hear from any of the global health sciences students um, and just any even words of support for our young people who have, you know, put so much effort into today's presentation. So any questions for them or any comments, I think they'd be so, so excited. They've, they've really put a lot of effort and time into today's presentation and we'd be really grateful to hear from all of you. Yeah, I'll start. Hi, this is Kelly, um, Please go ahead. Resident, I guess. Um, and I, I don't have any questions, I don't think, but it was just really great to see, um, you know, all the work that you guys have done and mostly your enthusiasm. And it's great to hear, you know, kind of the transformation that you guys made and hearing about now, you know, how confident you guys are in your ability to communicate this information is, is great to hear. And I think a lesson for all of us. Yeah, I second that, uh, Kelly, absolutely. Um, I'll, I'll ask a question to uh, the youth out there. It, you know, it can be to Pavan Kasturyavni or anybody else on the team, but I'm curious what your favorite part is of being in doing this work and being part of the AHC family. You know, like, why did you decide to join the movement? Why did you decide to be a champion? Yeah, okay, I'd love to answer that. But Avni, you can go first. Yeah, thank you, Gasturi. So, so being in the AHC family is uh, is bringing a lot of joy. It it it, it 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 gives us some of the lessons which we want to we want that to happen. Like we go through some leadership skills. We develop confidence. We develop a lot of teamwork activities, and which is uh which is directly blooming ourselves from inside and outside and we are most uh, we we are uh, we we know to speak interact we are getting more to uh, knowing how an organization is helping youth we are working with the youth and so that's what something is which is, which is a which makes it attractive is the i think the youth advisory board is uh, a lot attractive and I think that that attracted me the work which adolescent health champion does for all the youth around us is that attracts me it, it's a lot of thing there are a lot of things that has been so much into uh, attracting me towards it thank you thank you Avni. let's go to Kasturi and then I see Adina's hand raised as well yeah, my favorite part about being a YAB member is actually testing the boundaries. I did not know that like after becoming a champion, there's something known as the Youth Advisory Board. But something that motivated me to join it is like seeing like how far can I go? Because in the Indian society, these topics are something you just cannot talk about freely. So I just wanted to see how far I can go, like how much my family can like accept. I found out like my parents are pretty open-minded about such things. So I was very happy knowing that. And another thing is I wanted others to expand their boundaries. I wanted like my friends, the people around me to understand that the LGBTQ community is like, they're just a part of us. We need to accept them. And I, I kind of wanted to spread these messages. So that's what encouraged me to join here. Thank you. Thank you, Kasturi. Uh, Adina, feel free. Uh, hi, uh, good evening and good morning to everyone. So uh, first of all, I'd like to congratulate Kasturi, Avni and... Uh, the sorry, I Pavan, Pavan. Oh, Pavan, Pavan. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I would like to congratulate all three of you. We knew that you guys would just do your best because we have we you know we have been seeing you working already with us doing so great. So we knew that here also you'll come up with the best of you and you actually did the best. Uh, and if I would like to say the things that uh, you know made me more excited to join AHC was because I think being in AHC since the time I've joined AHC, I have always learned to be myself. I have 
you know because in normal societies it's like we have to talk the thing that is correct like if we say something which we don't know what we are saying we just have to say because you know we feel like no we can also speak something but the society is like no you're wrong you can't say this and then they correct us by discouraging us but being and being a part of ASC no matter what we speak we have been corrected but without being discouraged so that's the one thing that you know just attracted me so much towards ASC and in ASC it's like we are not doing a thing you know just the study study type but we are enjoying we are learning and we are also educating others so that's also one more thing that attracts me a lot and there are many more things but if I start detailing then I guess the time wouldn't be enough so I would just like to end up saying and I always feel very lucky to be a part of ASC or IB thank you Thank you, Adina. That was that was so poignant. I think I think you're right. Adults do often correct and discourage, and, and so I really appreciate you highlighting that and the importance of, of mentorship um, and in promoting the potential of all of you. Uh, I see lots of hands raised. That's great. So let's go to Meron and then uh, Rashi. Um, hi, everybody. I just wanted to say this was such an amazing presentation. You are all so inspiring. Um, and the courage that you have to present, you're so well spoken and eloquent. Um, so one question I had was what was one of your favorite projects that you've worked on so far? Joy, maybe we'll, we'll ask you if, if there's someone you recommend to speak. Oh, yeah. Adina, do you want to talk about um, the COVID study? Yes, sure. I would love to. So right now, basically, a few of the members from YAB, not all of them, we are working on a COVID-19 survey where we have, you know, most of the questions related to COVID-19. And, you know, the basic questions that we need to know from adolescents, from their point of view, what they think about that, which even includes uh, the topics that the story mentioned, the topics that people in India don't talk about normally. So we are basically working and our goal is to reach 1000 right now. And I guess we are almost very close to it. Priya ma'am and then Nandita ma'am and Avni and me. And there are many more people who have been working. We, we have also, it's, uh, we have uh, released two different versions of, you know, like languages. It depends on languages because, you know, people do face problems in you know uh, filling the forms in uh, filling the form in english language and in another language so we have removed it in different you know languages and also we have been posted this on our instagram page and to the people we know and we also i would i was thinking of highlighting that we could even highlight the form here in this meeting by posting the link so we could you know get more wonderful responses and i would love to is say this to Priya ma'am if she can do this and yeah that's all what we are working on right now so of the COVID-19 thing so, yeah thank you thank you Adina Rashi see your hand up Thank you. This was a very beautiful presentation presented by all of them. Yeah, their words were so motivating and it's so inspiring to everyone. So everyone wants to do everything that can make everyone happy. And as Kasturi said, if we will not talk about the topic, so how we would get aware? So there's no shame in talking about the topics. Yeah, if we will talk about the topics, then only we would get aware about it. There are many things so we can do. We can do discussion, we can do a debate, we can do plays, we can do talks, talk sessions uh, to describe them. And I think uh, we all should be aware of that. And uh, a very thank you to Piyam and Kisa for organizing this. Thank you. Thank you, Rashi. That was that was beautiful. I totally agree. Um, I if I can, I have a question for I Ishani, Mom. Um, I'm I'm curious a little bit on I guess I guess two fronts. So one is 
Of, of course, the goal and the hope of all of the work that everyone do, is doing is not just to influence or, or change the hearts and minds of those who are in the curriculum, but really the very culture, right, of India and of society. Um, so with that in mind, have you noticed any changes to the culture of the schools that you work in where AHC is present? Um, and related to that, um, how has this changed, you know, your interactions or thoughts of some of the, the teachers in, in the school itself? Do, do they seem to be influenced by this work too? Uh, yes, uh, thank you so much. It's a great question because being uh, associated with school for so many years, I did, uh, as I said, I did notice that there was a great need to include this in the curriculum. Uh, and now that we are going to schools and presenting this, uh, uh, this specific curriculum to the students of that given school, the principals have repeatedly inculcated this program and the way they have been excited about it, the way have, they have been involved, uh, Lakshmi ma'am is present here, Rekha ma'am of Uday Ajal school, <clears throat> Madhuri ma'am of uh, Mahapragya school. The principals have really appreciated that their students uh, have come up and uh, started this, uh, spreading this culture. And slowly it is becoming a movement. Uh, they are going out and talking with the, the students, are talking with their uh, friends and as Kasuri said, their family uh, and the parents are being involved. And yes, uh, extending it from school to uh, the home, uh, we are trying to uh, open up the minds of parents too, that this is something that they need also to talk about. They also need to uh, have this awareness in the at home front too. And uh, obviously, I'm, we are very, very delighted with all the support that uh, the school and the principal has uh, have given us, and the way they have, uh, uh, you know, coordinated and cooperated uh, to have this curriculum included in their schools, and repeatedly, not only just once, and then uh, just shunning it. It, it has been, uh, you know. Uh, taken ahead uh, the next year because the students would uh, move uh, forward and they uh, they would graduate from school. So the new students who would come in the highest standards would uh, uh, benefit from this. So this, the, the schools have come back and we have done this repeatedly, yes. Um, if I could quickly chime in, we do have, I believe one of our principals with us, Lakshmi ma'am. Lakshmi ma'am. So, sorry to put you on the spot. If you are <laughs> able to unmute and share your thoughts on this question about or the impact of AHC on the school. We would love to hear from you. If, if you're unable to unmute or speak right now, that's totally fine, no problem. But if you're able to join, we would love to hear from you. Yeah, good evening, uh, uh, Priya ma'am and team. Uh, AHC has given a wonderful platform for our children to empower themselves. Okay, uh, it, you know, it has, it, when it was introduced to your school, it was something new for all of us, even for the teachers and for the children. And it gave a venue or gave an opportunity for children to unravel many things uh, that we that they have not known so far, and uh, they have been getting a lot of uh, you know opportunities to uh, showcase their you know uh, hidden uh, potentials of uh, facing an audience, talking about a subject in a very authentic and very professional way. All these things have happened just because of. Uh, AHC team uh, on behalf of my school, Vidya Thiraja High School and Junior College, and on behalf of all my children, we extend our gratitude to you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, ma'am. We really, really appreciate your, your kind words. I hope you are very proud to see Bhavan and, and Avni in action today, and we would not be in the program we are without the support of amazing educators like Lakshmi ma'am, who um, see and understand and most importantly support our vision for empowering and, and developing youth holistically. So thank you, ma'am, and, and sorry to put you on the spot again, but we're really, I thought it was really important that the folks here- yeah, to hear to I didn't expect so actually, that was why I did not switch on my video. I'm so sorry for <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Okay, back to you, so go ahead. Oh, that's great. I, you know, echo the, the importance of support uh, from school administration. So thank you, Lakshmi ma'am, for everything you're doing. Um, let's go to Karthik. And then Yashri, I saw your hand up for a moment. I don't know if you have a question after, but we'll go to Karthik first. Karthik, if you're speaking, you're on mute. 
सर कैन यू हेल्प मी सो फॉर मी इन एडोलेसेंस हेल्थ चैंपियन द पीपीटी वाज वेरी नाइस एंड व्हेन दे कम टू व्हेन दे केम टू द स्कूल टॉकिंग अबाउट एडोलेसेंस हेल्थ चैंपियन देन आई गॉट इंटरेस्टेड इनटू दैट एंड देन आई थॉट व्हाई वोंट आई गिव अ ट्राई टू गेट इनटू एडोलेसेंस हेल्थ चैंपियन एंड आई गॉट इनटू इट आल्सो एंड मोस्टली फॉर मी instead of uh, like a health uh, adults and self champion group it's like a family to me because it is a great bonding with everyone for example like priya ma'am riki sir with them i got a very great bonding with them and to the others also so that's why i wanted to thank the ahc more than just learning and taking away from that it create a great family with us respecting others feelings and uh, many other things so that's why i wanted to thank the ahc team thank you so much kartik <laughs> thank you so much for those um kind words um i will say that you know we become so invested in each and every youth and so i'm just so grateful to hear from uh, so many of the young people here and you know hear your perspectives your genuine perspectives of the program from your own voice and your own vision and your own perspective and it it really means a lot for us too to hear this as well yeah thank you karthik uh i i echo the gratitude absolutely let's go to so unfortunately we are running out of time i would love to keep this conversation going for hours more um some of you need to go to bed soon too <laughs> uh, so uh let's go for the final two comments we'll go to yashvi um and then to somebody named priya shankar <laughs> but uh, it's potentially someone else uh and then close out back with with ricky and, and priya and enjoy and any final comments so go ahead yashvi hi so uh when first ahc was introduced in our school i had when they presented for the first time i was very interested in the topics they were new to me and the thing uh, was that i was really excited to join yap when i heard that uh, we can join in it then then uh, i was very interested to learn new things in it that's why i have joined yap and this ahc team is very helpful to us and where it's very supporting thank you thank you so much yashvi and uh, so hill i would love to hear actually just one final comment from uh heba actually one of our champions who's actually gone from being a champion to joining our yab to now joining our team um so heba are you there by chance yes ma'am go ahead so um like uh, like ma'am said that i am now a part of ahc but i used to be a champion uh, i used to be a member of yab and like uh, ahc had come to our school so that was the first time where um like i had uh, that that was the first time i i encountered with such a nice organization and like it wasn't like any other organization it was very different like from every perspective i and i mean it i really mean it because like in many other organizations where uh, the members of the organization like they just they themselves give out the information but this was really different and it meant something to me because um, in in this in this organization being a part of this organization i get to educate my peers so it really um it really affects me and it really means a lot because this is my opportunity to become a better person and like it's just like uh acting on becoming a nice person and helping out my peers and like educating them and making them like helping them with everything and ahc helped me a lot like uh Thank you Hiba it looks like you uh, you're back on mute I am really grateful of being a part of the organization and um, I'm glad that I was selected and 
i am like really uh, i'm like very i have really short words but um i don't know i'll need a whole like even a diction even the word full of dictionary would be uh like it would just <laughs> will not um describe the way that what ahc means to me so that that's what i'd like to say i think i'll just add a small point here that he by have not been just helping your peers but he also inspire us every day in the sense that how confident you are when you when it comes to talking about all these health topics i think it really inspires us and blows our mind secondly he by has also been helping us in the expansion team something that is really difficult right and he was point have been so instrumental in helping us to scale and how we can you know reach out to more schools she has also been talking about how we can possibly collaborate with governments i think that is something that is really brilliant and the points that all the adolescents and youth in this team bring to the table it's just it's it's so wonderful and it's so inspiring to know so i just wanted to add yeah thank you joy uh, i agree not short words here but powerful words um and and so with that uh, unfortunately as i was mentioning i think we're out of time let me hand it over back to uh, joy sir and enrique sir and priya ma'am to to close out the session thank you again all of you for being here this was fantastic I just wanted to say thank you to all of those who attended today's presentation and um the biggest biggest thank you to UCSF um this has been like a home um for so many years for all of us including um this take this team that has come and spoken here set for several years in a row and um on my own journey as uh you know as a doctor it's been like such an important place for me so just the biggest biggest thank you to Sohil to um the UCSF Global Health Sciences to UCSF Pediatrics um and to everyone here who attended it means so much and thanks for all the beautiful support and comments it means a lot we hope some of you might would, might like to get involved or um be part of our team or um get involved in any aspect um you can always reach out to us um and i believe the next slide actually shows our email ids and um contact information if anybody wanted to reach out to us you we would love to hear from you we would love to connect with you all and um thank you so much to everybody Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to all Thank our you. youth. I, I'm so, so proud of all of you for coming. I could tell so many of you wanted a chance to speak and present and share your thoughts. We are so, so proud of this confidence and you know, all of you trying to make the most of this opportunity to practice public speaking. We will find ways for all of you to get a chance to speak, I promise. And for those of you who we haven't been to your schools in a few months, we're really, really excited to come back and we'll be catching up with all of you very, very soon. So thank you all to the youth, especially you all made this session so memorable and special. So thank you all for joining. Yes, and if we could take a quick photograph actually, Sohil, that would be great. If any of the youth want